set a cake of wool. But in this way, I'm a dream of that by light of day. Gonna hold up high, sky and say, only I own it.
your friends Cause we out here on a Friday Where it began And if you want it on a Tuesday so watch your
up to Jesus. It's a word that's used to exalt God and praise God. So for this next song, I really want you guys to listen and sing the lyrics out with everything in you um, and just really, really praise Him um, with all your heart. So.
God of creation There at the start Before the beginning of time With no point of reference You spoke to the dark And fleshed out the wonder of life And as you speak, a hundred billion galaxies are born. In the vapor of your breath, the planets fall. If the stars were made to worship so light, I can see your heart and earth. Burning star, a single fire of grace. If creation sings your praises so just for us. 
soften our hearts, Lord, for you, and we accept your word, and pray for Nick tonight, and that he, as he preaches, it's your words, Lord, not his, and that you just do a miracle in everything tonight, Lord. We thank you so much, and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. actually pretty excited. Today we get to continue our sermon series called Clean. Uh, this sermon series is really just a talk about purity. What is purity? What, the, what does the Bible say about purity? Is it only physical? Is it mental? Is it what is it saying? And I'm so excited because today we get to, to talk about something a little bit more serious. It, it's, it's the physicalness of purity. 
And what, what, we, what the Bible says about the physicalness of purity, about the physicalness of being clean. One of my favorite verses is clean hands, pure hearts. It's a really famous song. It continues out and says, clean hands, pure hearts, good grace, good God. We've sung it a million times. And it's one of those things where before the Lord, you really have to come with a clean heart, with clean hands. You have to have the right intention. And that's what it's talking about, about purity. It's really just talking about this idea of coming to God with the right heart. Coming to God and worshiping him the right way. And I'm so excited. For those of you guys who don't know me, my name is Nick. I'm the youth director here. And I just want to thank everybody for coming out today. Now, it's interesting. As we spoke last week, we spoke about the purity of the heart and what it really meant to stay pure in the heart process. Right? Like, I, I made this analogy. Man, I used to have this a definition of clean that never really matched my dad's, right? Like, like when he would tell me to clean the room, I'd throw everything underneath the bed and be like, it's clean. And it was such a funny analogy, but it's the truth. Like, like we have a different definition of cleanliness than God does. And when you look at what biblical cleanliness is, it encompasses everything from, from your physical state, your emotional state, your intellectual state, even your spiritual state is this idea that all of that combines itself to where your heart posture is. Scripture says, where your heart is, there will be your treasure. We spoke about that last week as well. And truly, it's all, in order for us to, to, to come in front of Jesus, we have to come to a place of surrender. We have to come to a place where we give everything that we're over and we're struggling with. Now, before I even get into the sermon, if you guys have your Bibles, notebooks, and pens, I encourage you, whip them out, take some notes. Um, today, we're going to be in Corinthians, and the title of my sermon today is The Temple Matters. The Temple Matters. Today, we're going to be in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. I'm going to be using NLT. Again, I say this every week. Whatever version you have, it's great. It doesn't matter with NIV, NASB, ESV, the message, whatever it is, it's all God breathed. Just open up. This is just happens to be a little bit easier of a translation. Now, 1 Corinthians, before I even start, it's this letter, uh, letter that's written by Paul. Now, for those who don't know, Paul is this apostle. He's writing to the city of Corinth. And see, the church it, in and of itself, it's facing a lot of problems. It's facing a lot of problems. So, so Paul writes to this church to empower them. He's writing and saying, hey, remember of God's good grace. And you need to know that, that with Christ, you're not alone. He, he gave himself up for you. But it's such a massive letter that he speaks about a few main things. See, he, he talks about the foolishness of men. How foolish are we to think that we're wise? He talks about the, the Holy Spirit. He talks about the body of Christ. Essentially, Bo, though, what he's really talking about is understanding what a holy boundary is for you in your life. And he's giving it to the entire church. That said, go ahead and turn over to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 11. It reads like this. Some of you were once like that. But you were cleansed and you were made holy. You were made right with God by calling on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And by the spirit of our God. You might say, I'm allowed to do anything, but not everything is good for you. And even though I'm allowed to do anything, I must not become a slave to anything. You say food was made for the stomach and the stomach for food. This is true, though someday God will do away with them both. But you, but you can't say that our bodies were made for sexual morality. See, they were made for the Lord. And the Lord cares about our bodies. And God will raise us from the dead by his power, just as he raised our Lord from the dead. 
don't you realize that your bodies are actually parts of Christ? Should a man take his body, which is part of Christ, and join it to a prostitute? Never. And don't you realize that if a man joins himself to a prostitute, he becomes one body with her. For the scripture says the two are united into one. But the person who is joined with the Lord is one spirit with the Lord. So run away from sexual sin. No other sin so clearly affects the body as this one does. For sexual immorality is a sin against your own body. Don't you realize that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? Who lives in you and gives, it was given to you by God? See, you do not belong to yourself. For God bought you with a high price. So you must honor God with your body. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, I just thank you so much for everything that you do. And giving me the ability to speak to this congregation, whether online or in person, Lord, I pray that you touch their hearts. Lord, that this message today that's being spoken, that it can penetrate everybody sitting here. Lord, that your word can resound like a gong in their heads, in their minds, in their souls, Father. And Lord, that they leave here today changed. They leave here thinking differently about who they are and what they were created for. Lord, I pray that you pierce everybody's hearts today. Thank you for everything that you do. It's in your son's name I pray. Jesus Christ, amen. I have a real quick question. Do I have any boundary pushers in this room? Do you guys know what a boundary pusher is? No, some of you guys do? Yeah, yeah, I already know. All right. A boundary pusher is somebody where your parents might say, hey, don't do this. And you're like, let's test it out. Like, like, do I have any boundary pushers in this room? It's all right. Raise your hand. I'm not going to judge you. No, I, I feel like all of you guys should raise your hand. Like, let's be honest. Right? I remember when I was a kid, I used to have a curfew. And I want to say, say a kid. I was in high school. I was in like 12th grade. It's not really, I guess. But I remember my mom telling me very clearly, like, hey, your curfew, okay, it's going to be 12. You have to be home at 12. It doesn't matter, you know, on the weekends it was 12. The weekdays it was like 9, 30, 10, okay? But I remember her always saying, hey, follow your curfew. And every time I would go out, it would be like, oh, be home at 12. I'm sneaking in at like 1.30, hoping she's not like up, right? And the moment I'm sneaking in, she like turns on the light. She's like, where were you? And I'm like, uh. <laughs> now, th- I lived before Life360. Uh, they didn't have GPS tracking. They didn't have any of that stuff. Uh, parents, if you're watching, get Life360. It'll make their kids, like, hard. Sorry, guys. Sorry. But, like, I lived before any of that. So, like, my parents didn't know where I was at any given time. In fact, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of, like, throw this out. I lived, like, when I was in high school, I think I got my first cell phone Actually, I think it was like 11th grade, 12th grade. And it was like Virgin Mobile. That company doesn't even exist anymore, right? Like, and it was like a block. It, was like, it, wasn't, it wasn't as cute as our iPhones today, right? But I lived through that era. So my parents had no idea where I was, who I was with, what I was doing. They actually just took me for my word. So it would go like this. I'd walk up. I'd be like, hey, mom, uh, me and my cousin Chris, we're going to go out. And, like, we're just going to hang out and play video games. And she'd be like, okay, until what time? And I'd be like, oh, you know, I'll be back before like 10. And she's like, Nick, it's a work day. Make sure you're here by nine. And I'm like, mom, can I get like 9.30? And she's like, Nick, if I give you this one time and you cross it, you know you're never going out again. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. And then like I'd come home at like 11 and I'd open the door and she's like, bro, seriously? And I'm like, uh, there was traffic and like there was like, you, you, bro, a car got into an accident. I saw it like flip and like it was crazy. You can't judge me for traffic. Like I would do the utmost worst to like bend that boundary. I, I would always do it. It doesn't matter what happens or what type of scenario. I was that guy that like if my mom says, hey, don't touch the stove, I'd be like, Aah! like that was who I was. A part of me, to be honest, I'm a little bit like that to this day. Like, that's just who I am. 
And it's crazy, though, because if there was a boundary, I would always push it. Some of you guys here are just like me. But can I say that like, there are biblical boundaries that God gave us to keep us safe? Can I say that like, like God gave us biblical boundaries to make sure we're not going to do anything stupid, like burning our hands? He did that because he cares. He gave us biblical boundaries because he loves us and cares. Let's turn back. Go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. It says this. Uh, right before all of that, Paul says this. He says, those who indulge in sexual sin or who worship idols or who commit adultery or who, who, who use prostitutes or practice homosexuality or thieves or greedy or drunks or abusive or cheat on people, none of these people will inherit the kingdom of God. And then, and then Paul sits there and says, some of you guys were like this. Some of you guys were like this. Now, if we're going to be truthful, all of us fall into one of these categories. All of us fall into one of them, whether, whether it's sexual sin, whether it's worshiping idols, whether it's, you know, stealing or being greedy, whatever the case might be, every single person in this room falls down in this category, one of them. And Paul says, none of these people will inherit the kingdom of God, but because of God, you used to be like this. You're no longer like this. You used to be like that. It says this, but then you were cleansed and you were made holy. You were made right with God by calling on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the spirit of our God. There was a transformation in a lot of your lives where you went from doing this uh, to saying, yes, Lord, I won't do that. I'm not going to put myself in that position anymore. It continues on by saying this. Again, these are, these are the boundary pushers. See, in verse 12 it says, you say, I'm allowed to do anything, but not everything is good for you. How many people sit here and argue biblical boundaries? Like, like I, I once had a conversation with somebody, and they are like, man, I really want to get a tattoo. It's not against the Bible. I was like, you're absolutely right, but is it good for you? Is it beneficial? What are you getting out of it? Right? I, I, I've talked to certain people who are over the age of 18 and they're like, yo, I smoke cigarettes. All right. Where in the Bible does it say I can't smoke cigarettes? No, you're absolutely right. But should you? It's not a matter of whether you can or can't. It's whether you should do that under God. And some of you guys here today, you do the exact same thing. You're like, man, I'm a Christian. I can get away with certain things. Nowhere in the Bible does it say X, Y, and Z, but I'm just going to go out and do it. And Paul is sitting here saying, dude, it is not beneficial for you to do these things with your bodies. It is not beneficial for you to go that route. And even though I am allowed to do anything, I must not become a slave to anything. How many times are we making ourselves as slaves to things because we push those boundaries? Whether that's pornography, whether that's cigarettes, whether that's drinking underage, whatever it is, lying, stealing, being greedy. We're opening up those doors, and almost immediately we become captives by them. Right? Like, how many of you guys have ever heard the saying uh, between boyfriend and girlfriend, once a cheater, always a? Oh. Once a cheater, always a cheater. Why do you say that? Because they've crossed that boundary, and once they've crossed it, there's no coming back, right? At least not with you. You're like, nah, I'm not going to test myself with that person again. And yet, we, we're looking at these boundaries that God has set up for us, and even us, ourselves, we're slowly crossing them. We're pushing those boundaries further and further. So even though I'm allowed to do anything, I must not become a slave to anything. So you say food was made for the stomach and the stomach for food. And although this is true, in heaven, you're not going to need a stomach. But you can't say that our bodies were made for sexual immorality. They were made for the Lord and the Lord cares about our bodies. 
What's crazy is that when Paul right now, he, he, he's tackling this really big concept of sexual morality. He's, he's talking and he's writing to this church in Corinth, right? Who, who by the way, most of them are Greek. They don't know the, the Lord in the traditional sense. They didn't grow up in the church, right? They didn't sit there from day one and were like, wow, Jesus. Like, they didn't do any of that, right? They grew up not understanding who God truly was. So he's writing to them and saying, hey, look, the sexual morality that's going on right now, it's not cool. The things that you're doing with your bodies right now, that's not okay. Like, the, the positions you're putting yourself into, you should rethink those. Because the Lord created them. God created you to what? To worship him. He did so because he cares for you. He loves you. He wants to see you prosper. He wants to see you grow. And continues in verse 14. And God will raise us from the dead by his power just as he raised Christ from the dead. Don't you realize that your bodies are actually parts of Christ? Should a man take his body, which is a part of Christ, and join it to a prostitute? Never. And don't you realize that if a man joins himself to a prostitute, he becomes one body with her? For the scripture does say the two are united into one. But the person who is joined with the Lord is one spirit with him. Can I be honest with you guys right now? A lot of times what we end up doing in our life is we try and we attempt to bring God, a holy God, into a very unholy place. Like a lot of us, we might have relationships with God, but then we're still going on and we're looking at porn. Right? Like, like a lot of us might have relations with God, but then we're actively stealing from the store. Like, it's not like, a, oh, man, I put the glasses on me and I completely forgot. No, we're like, we're slipping them in and we're like, oh, God, yeah, I want them. Right? Like, like some of us are actively putting the Holy Spirit in a position that is unholy. Now, don't get it twisted. God cannot be unholy. But you are one flesh with God. Once you've accepted God into your life, guess what? You are the temple of God. You, you, your flesh, you belong to God. And when you start diving into the worlds like this, you start trying to bring God into this unholy place. And that's just not the way it works. Right? Like, has anybody ever had a conviction? For those of you who have no idea what that is, it's like, you think back, you're about to do something, and you're like, man, I really shouldn't do that. That's pretty stupid. That's a conviction. It's when your mind, or, or what we like to say, the Holy Spirit, is telling you, do not do that. There's only going to bring negative consequences. Don't do it. And a transgression is when we actively do it anyways. It's no longer a sin anymore, but rather it's us intentionally sinning against God. It's us intentionally putting God into this unholy area. We're trying to put him into this impurity, and we can't. Verse 18, it says this. Run away from sexual sin. No other sin is so clearly affects the body as this one does. For sexual morality is a sin against its, your own body. Do you not realize that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? who lives in you and was given to you by God, you don't belong to yourself. For God bought you with a high price. So you must honor God with your body. Man, he's making such a, a huge, a huge step forward when it comes to sexual sin. And I'm not only talking about like, let's be honest, I'm not only talking about like, like us having sex. Like, the positions we put ourselves in when we're starting to watch porn, that's sexual sin. The scripture says, the moment you lust with your eyes, you've committed adultery. Let me put it plainly. The moment you look at a girl, you're like, damn. Right? You have you've essentially cheated on your future wife. Let me put it very plainly. The moment, ladies, you've looked at a man, you're like, damn. You've essentially cheated with your heart on your future 
husband. And so God is sitting here and saying, hey, look, when you've lusted with your eyes, you've already committed adultery. You've put yourself in a position to fail. So the minute you guys are looking at porn, guess what you guys are doing? You're cheating on your future husbands. You're cheating on your future wives. That's what the Bible says. The moment you give in to your boyfriend, girlfriend, side hookup, whatever the case might be, you guys are giving in and you che you're cheating on your future wives, your husbands. Paul sits here and says, bro, sexual sin is the most impure because it has lasting effects. You don't even know it. It's a, it's, it's a complete separation of holiness. In fact, when you start doing sexual sin, guess what happens? You start becoming addicted to those emotions, the feeling. You start building expectations of what should and should not happen. There's way more than just that, but, but those things are real. Look, look, do you not realize that your body is a temple for the Holy Spirit? Do you not realize that your very flesh is a temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God? You do not belong to yourself. For God bought you with a high price. So you must honor God with your body. I was reading that and, and I was thinking about me and my wife and, and our house. We're finishing moving and thanks. Uh, and, uh, and it was interesting. This past week we were moving and we have a gray couch, a light gray couch, very light. And it got dirty. But, like, really dirty. Like, I, we, we brought it into this new house that has more light. And I was looking, and I was like, dang, that's yikes. And my wife sat, looked at me, and she's like, babe, we've been living in filth. If you know my wife, my wife, I wouldn't call her a clean freak, but, like, she's definitely very clean. Right? Like, but she looked at the couch and was like, we have to do something about it. So for, like, three days in a row, she kept bugging me about, like, getting this vacuum, cleaning it up, and, like, like making sure it was clean. And I started thinking about, like, how it even ended up like that in the first place. Like, how, how did my couch get so filthy? Now, we've cleaned it. We're, it's fine. But, but that thought process kept bugging in my head. I don't know about you, but, like, I have certain boundaries in my house. So I was thinking about that. I was thinking about half of these youth kids that come over. Are they putting their feet on my couch? Like, are their shoes getting on my couch? Like, what is it? What's going on? Like, why is my, 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 my couch so filthy? I started, like, in my head, I'm like, yo, Matthew. Yo, Matthew. <laughs> Dog, did he put my, like, I, George, like, we all, who, who did it? Because I guarantee you my shoes are never on the couch. I have boundaries for my own house, right? Like, certain boundaries I have, like, hey, if I invite you over to my house, hey, do me a favor, clean up after your own mess. I'm not your maid, right? Like, most of us understand that, right? Uh, another one is, like, hey, gentlemen, specifically towards you, if you're urinating in the bathroom, please aim. I don't want to have to clean, and I don't want my wife sitting on it. Like, these are real things that I have. Like, those are boundaries in my own home. A lot of you guys have boundaries too, right? If your boy comes over, is he automatically allowed to open up the fridge, grab whatever drink he wants? Some of you are like, no, nah, that's, that's mad rude. Right? What, what about, you know, for the ladies? Can I just go into your, 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 your room and start going through all of your dressers? What about reading your diaries? There are boundaries that you even have. Right? Like, right? There are boundaries that you set, that you have established. Right? You yourselves, me, myself, we have put in place. But why? Why? Because we care about the things that we have. I care about my couch. I care about my wife not sitting down on a toilet that's wet. Right, like you care about not having all of your deep dark secrets exposed because somebody read your diary. Right? Some of the guys, you know, if you, you play PS4, like like don't scratch my discs. Don't put it on a flat service. Don't don't like ee! like careful with my stuff. It's my stuff. You guys have boundaries on your own because you care and love your items. You care and love your situations, your homes, your, your PS2s, your what, whatever the case might be. PS2, dang. PS5, I just got to, yeah. But, but that's the truth. You have honor for all of those things, right? Right? 
Like, like, like let's not lie. Like, if, if, listen, raise your hand right now if I can go into your house right this second and do whatever I want. Yo, Keith, first off, your family, be quiet. And second off, Keith, doubt it. Right? Like, like, even if it's not our personal boundaries, then we have parents that, like, right? Like, our parents aren't going to allow us to do certain things. They have boundaries because they care and honor their stuff. What's crazy is that God put boundaries too. He put boundaries in our own lives. I'm going to go ahead and read something real quick in Leviticus. It says this, in Leviticus, Old Testament, a book about the law. He says to Moses, warn your brother Aaron not to enter the holy place. Because if he chooses, if he does, he will die. Why? For the ark's cover, the place of atonement is there. I myself am present in the clouds above the atonement cover. See, in this little area, the Old Testament, we were not the temple. The temple used to be this like a tent and then like God would come and then there was a courtyard and then you'd make sacrifices and then behind that there was another fence. Like, like it was heavily guarded. And scripture says you cannot go inside because you would die because you were unclean. He sat there and said, hey, look, you are so unclean. You can't come to this place. This place, the holy place, was made to make things right, to reconcile. Do you, know, do you guys know what that means? It means to pay for the sins that have occurred. It was a place to pay to make things correct again. And see, the, the temple, the most holy places, it was always separated from sin. It was always apart from the rest of the world. God made it so. And so he placed holy boundaries around his temples, and if you didn't abide by them, there were consequences. In fact, in the Old Testament, there's this idea that, that even the high priests, they couldn't enter the holy place without having a string attached to their ankles with bells. Why? Because if the moment you were, ding, 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 that means the guy died and they had to pull him out. Because he was unclean. He didn't repent from what he had done. This temple, this idea of the temple in the Old Testament was so sacred and holy, you had to honor it. You couldn't just go in there with whatever expectations that you had. And God is sitting here saying, bro, in the New Testament, guess what? You are the temple of God. The holiness, the honor, it's now bestowed upon your body. The Holy Spirit has descended upon you. What's crazy about the world, see, the, big, the, the world's biggest problem is that we truly believe that these bodies belong to us. We truly believe, we truly believe that we could do whatever we want, whenever we want. Oh, I came to, I came to God like, yeah, I'm saved. I could do whatever I want. It doesn't matter. I'm saved. It's not the way it works. I'm so sorry to tell you. We truly believe that, that we can push boundaries with our entire, our entire being, our bodies. I, I have an example right here. It's crazy that God has set up caution tapes in our life. He's given us boundaries, spiritual boundaries, not to cross. He sat there and said, hey, don't go past this point because something bad will happen. And yet still we're like, nah, man, it's cool. Like, I know what I'm doing, God. I'm just going to go over here. Oh, no, nah, it's fine. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rip this caution tape. And it's fine. I'm going to expose myself to pornography. I'm going to expose myself to pornography because I have desires and needs that I have to let go. And when the pornography fades, guess what? I'm going to get my girlfriend to fulfill those expectations and needs. But you know what's crazy? I, I was talking to, to my pastoral team about this. If everybody adhered to the Bible and nobody had sex outside of marriage, would there be any STDs in the world? 
how would there be? How many hearts would be saved because you guys didn't have sex outside of marriage? In fact, what about this idea of looking at porn? Well, porn is harm, harmless. It's just, it's just it's me looking at it. Yeah, but what about the expectations you build? Or the addiction to always needing some? Right? Like, when you get married, guess what? Guys, your wife might not want to have it. And you're going to have to be okay with that sometimes. But you start looking at porn and you start thinking, man, this is what I expect or this is what I want or this is what I'm looking into. Women, same thing for you. You think that, that there's no consequence to that, but I guarantee you there is. And so when Paul is writing this, he's looking and he's saying, listen, you don't understand the consequences yet. But there's a reason not to do that. And yet still we're looking at it like, oh, no, don't worry. I'm going to come over here, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tear another one. I'm going to drink some alcohol, smoke some vape. It's not bad. We're going to sit there and be like, yeah, you know what? The beer, it's fine. The vape pen, it's fine. I'll smoke whenever I want. I'll drink whenever I want. We'll test that boundary. Nowhere in the Bible does it say it. Yeah, but what happens to your liver? your lungs many of you guys don't know this when I was younger I was like a pack a day smoker and I can tell you right now it definitely affects your lungs it definitely affects your entire health it affects who you are you know how much money I spent you know how much money y'all spent on this stuff what is this like $20 one for one What about the beer? You know how many lives have been ruined because of drunk driving? But you think you guys can handle it. It's fine. Oh, but it's my body. I'll do whatever I want with it. Is it? It's crazy. My grandfather, barely talked to him. I remember meeting him. And, it, and almost instantly I knew he was an alcoholic. His teeth were rotting. He drank like five beers in front of me and then wanted shots after. I was like, dude, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. And it was this absolute need to have his fill. It was this absolute need to have all of these, these cravings, these desires. Do you know what it is to smoke and then cut off clean turkey? You know how much attitude you give? You know how much disrespect you give off? It's your body. And what's even crazier is that none of you guys are even legal. You shouldn't even be touching this stuff. And yet you do. Because it's my body. It's not God, it's me. What a, what, let's even go deeper. What about unhealthy food choices? Not even food. I'm going to attack everything. Bro. I'm going to attack everything. You want to know why? Here's the thing. Here's the truth. Whether it's the actual McDonald's or whether you're, you're like actively just craving something like just one thing at all times. You have to understand, there is balance. Thank you. Even with food choices. See, here's the thing. No matter what your vice is, put it up there. No matter what you're putting your body through, put it up there. No matter, no matter what it is that you might struggle with, put it up there. Because Corinthians, it says this, don't you realize that your bodies are the temple of God? Would you smoke this at church? Would you drink this at church? Would you watch porn at church? But yet you're confused. This temple, this building, it's not the real temple. You are the temple. And yet you put your bodies in that. You put your bodies through all of that unhealthy disgustingness. Because you confuse what church really is. And this building means nothing. 
according to scripture, this building means nothing. You are the building of God. And, and what's crazy, what's crazy is that he even says that you do not even belong to yourself. It is not your body. Bro, you on rental. Your body is rented out. You are like that Netflix DVD old school that you have to return to. You have to return to it. And guess what? Any scratches or dings, you're paying for it. And let me tell you what, man, you do not want to have to pay towards God because you couldn't honor what God's building was. Because you didn't adhere to the caution tape. Because you saw it, but you're like, nah, it doesn't matter. I'm still going to do my own thing. You know what's crazy? We fail to honor God's temple. We fail to honor God's home. We fail to honor God himself. And yet the moment we need him, we're calling out to his name. I don't know about you, but if you ever came to my house and disrespected my house, don't call me again. Don't call me for, for a favor. That, I'm just being real with you. If you sat there and started graffitiing all over my walls, if you sat there and started smoking cigarettes in my walls, breaking bottles in my walls, leaving trash everywhere, guess what? I am not going to forgive you so easily. And yet we do that to God every day. We forget what purity is within our own temple. So we make all the wrong decisions. We dishonor him through our bodies. And then go back to him saying, Lord, help me out. I need this A. Lord, help me out. My parents, they're, they're strangling me, man. Lord, help me out. Like, I, I just, I, I'm so frustrated. I'm anxious. I'm, I'm filled with anxiety and worry, and I can't get through this. Yet we dishonor him with our bodies. We dive headfast and not thinking about any of the consequences that we have to face. We look at the caution tape and said, man, we're going to be, we're going to be, like, like, like push all of these boundaries as far as they can go. And then the moment we have cancer, like, how did that happen? The moment we're, 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 we're literally having can or liver failure, how did that happen? The moment we're fat and obese, how did that happen? The moment we're married and yet we're still addicted to pornography, how did that happen? Oh God, help me out. I didn't expect that. I didn't mean to cast the STD. I didn't mean to be unfaithful to the girl. I didn't mean to get lazy. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't mean to be addicted to all of these different things. And see, God, God sits there and he says, man, you matter to me. You are my building. You are my temple. In fact, I, I sent my son to pay for the, on the price for you. I told you, hey, look, listen, you were saved. That doesn't mean that you can do anything you want. It means I put boundaries to protect you and love you. I put boundaries so that way you would stay clean from the world. I put caution tape around your heart. I put caution tape around everything that you are so you don't end up failing. So you don't end up falling. God gave his son to us to make us pure and clean before his eyes. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that you might have salvation. He died on the cross so that way all of us can have this resemblance of purity. So that we all can be clean in the eyes of God. So that way we can, no matter what the stronghold might be, no matter what we've already tampered with, no matter how many caution tapes we pulled aside, 
God can sit there and say, no, don't worry, I can put them back up. I got you. I can clean you. I can give you a pure heart. I can make you new. But believe in me. Believe in Believe that I am your Lord and your Savior. My biggest question for you today is, are we really honoring God? Just with our bodies. I'm not even tackling our minds, where our spirit is. Like, like today, what are you doing with God's body? What are you doing with God's temple? How are you honoring him? Are you putting him and his honor first? Or are you making a mess of his home? Are you destroying it? Are you pushing the boundaries? Are you sitting there putting your hand on the stove and saying, God, it's okay. God has more for you. God had planned more for you. He didn't give up his son so that way you could do whatever you wanted to do. He didn't, he didn't put his son on a cross so that way you can go out and sin and, do, and have as much sex and, and have the freedom that you think you're having. You're still a slave to them. You just don't realize it. God gave you salvation so you could be truly free in his love. You can be free from the addictions and expectations. You can be free in just honoring and loving him. You can be free from all the insecurities that you might have. You can be free from all the, all the doubts that you might have. You can be free from sin. The question is, are you ready to be free from sin or, or are you still pushing all the boundaries possible? Are you still showing up at 2 a.m., 3 a.m., drunk? You guys hiding vape pens underneath your beds? In your pillows? Are you guys sitting here and, and, and doing whatever it is possible just to be a rebel? Just to have some semblance of coolness. Not recognizing that this, this will be your master in a few years. The vape pen, it'll rule over your life and your heart. Today, man, I, I want to say a prayer. And, if you're struggling with any, anything, it doesn't matter what you're putting up there. It doesn't matter what boundary you've crossed. It doesn't matter whether it's eating McDonald's or it's not really a sin, but like, you know what I'm saying? I wanna pray for you. I wanna pray that, that you can get your hearts right, you can start shifting and start honoring God with everything that you have. The truth is that in my own life, I was a very violent kid. In my own life, I learned the very hard way. It took a long, long time that my body is not my own. I can't do whatever I want with it. And I am on rental. The temple, it matters. It matters to God and it should matter to you. Today, you could either honor him, honor his temple, or you could leave unchanged. But know this, no matter what you decide, God loves you, he cares for you, he died on the cross for you, and he will never stop trying to reach your heart. He left the 99 for one. If that's you here today and you need prayer, man, I, I just wanna encourage you, bow your heads. Let me pray over you.
Father, no matter what is going on today, no matter what somebody's struggling with, no matter how difficult it might be to let go of the things that are holding on to them. Father, no matter how much they've been treating or distreating your temple, Father, Lord, I pray that in this moment they can repent. They can get right with you. They can ask for forgiveness. They can sit there before you and leave everything that they're stuck with at the altar. They leave here not wanting to still be addicted to the things that they put their bodies through. Lord, whether it's porn, whether it's vape, whether it's alcohol, whether, no matter what it is, cigarettes, it doesn't matter what it is, weed, whatever is holding on to them, Father, I pray that as they leave this door, you convict them. You allow them to change their ways. You, you allow them to see and recognize that, that this body belongs to you to honor you. To bring you praise. And Lord, you have set that caution, that tape up because you love and care for us. Not because you want to be controlling. Not because you want to be mean. Not because you're, you're this grumpy God who says, don't do this and don't do this. But rather you do this because you care and love us. So, Lord, I pray that we recognize this. Lord, I pray that we recognize this and, and we turn over to you. Lord, that we come to you with everything that we've been struggling with. And we truly just leave it at this altar today. Lord, I thank you for just dying on that cross for us, giving us hope, giving us a chance. But Lord, I pray that everybody in this room, that we can, we can look to honor you in everything we do and in who we are. Thank you, Father. It's in your son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Guys, I want to do something different. As the worship team comes up, whatever you're dealing with, whatever you're struggling with, Man, I, I want to open up the altar. I want you guys to come and pray. And I want our leaders to pray over you, no matter what you're going through. We want to be here for you. We want to be here through this struggle, because guess what? If not me, other leaders have done the exact same things. We have struggled with the exact same things. We have been in those positions. So I just open up the altar that you can get right with God, that you can be on your hands and knees, you can pray to him. And you can seek out his wisdom in all things.
right now we're in a powerful moment here where the spirit is moving in this room and if everyone could just please bow their heads and close their eyes we still have people up front here praying i want to pray as well god i want to thank you for your beautiful holy spirit lord how it's moving in this room lord i want to pray for all of our hearts lord and no matter what state it's in lord i pray you touch it lord lord some of the hearts here tonight lord are hearts of stone lord we're struggling lord hearts that have strongholds addictions whatever it may be lord i pray they feel your presence here tonight lord and they pursue you lord they look for change lord because you are the redeemer lord Lord, we thank you for all of the blessings that you give us lord we thank you that you're a god of second chances lord a god of third chances a fourth chances god you are a forgiving god lord a loving god your love is unconditional it's like no other lord and we thank you for that opportunity, Lord. And I pray that all the people here tonight, Lord, that haven't accepted you, that haven't looked towards you, Lord, they look towards you. And they walk that narrow path, Lord, not the wide one, not the, not the easy one, Lord, but the harder one, the one that follows your will, Lord, because your will is above all. Lord, we thank you for your precious and holy son, Lord. We pray this in your precious name. Amen. John. What is up? Let's give it a hand for Pastor Nick for his sermon. Yeah! Woo! All right, uh, let's start off with announcements. Um, first one, we got the Connect card. Can we get up on screen? All right, for the Connect card, don't be afraid to ever talk to one of your leaders. Whatever you ever need on that Connect card is there. Uh, guidance, fellowship, prayer, whatever you need is there. And don't be afraid to talk to one of us or the leaders or even Pastor Nick. And yeah. Yeah, yeah, for the Connect card as well, recently we had two in a row, two baptism Sundays in a row. So if you have not gotten baptized, talk to one of us, talk to one of the leaders, make sure you set that up. It's a, it's a really big declaration of your faith, and we extremely encourage it, for sure, 100%. Secondly, for our announcements, we have on Tuesday, Terrific Tuesday, it's going to be a water day. Come out, we're gonna have food, we're gonna play slip and slide kickball. It's gonna be a blast, you don't wanna miss it. We do it every single year, it's always a blast, every single time. Also, Wednesday, this Wednesday, we're gonna be at the Doggy Park at 6.30. The Doggy Park over there, it's by, um, it's leaving hammocks, if, if y'all know what that is. It's at 6.30 on Wednesday, we're gonna be doing evangelism. So, if you guys wanna learn how to evangelize and just spread the word, spread the gospel, be out there. We're going to be out with Pastor Mikey, Pastor Nick, all those people. It's going to be amazing. We're going to spread the word of God, spread the love, give us some treats. It's going to be awesome. Also, August 19th, back to school bash. Come on, let's get hyped for that. Come on, let's get hyped for that, bro. Let's go. No, back to school bash is always a blast. It's going to be amazing. We're going to have food. It's going to be from 6 to 11 p.m. It's going to be a long night, but it's going to be an action-packed night. So I want to see every single one of you guys there. And, John, we have one more announcement? And for the 26th of this month, uh, of this month, we are starting uh, life groups. There you Sorry. go. I'm forgetting. Um, it's all for all for Bible study and prayer and for connecting with one each other. And we're all doing it for God and His kingdom. So yeah. let's all get connected. Amen, 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 amen. So without further ado, everybody on their feet, on their feet. Everybody to the front. Let's get hyped for one more song. One more song. <laughs> 